everyone. Welcome back from the long weekend. Happy Canada Day if you are Canadian. And for the, my American friends, happy Independence Day. Hopefully you had a really good long weekend as well. So today coming back from the market, I was hoping and expecting more follow through today, uh, being that it's a Tuesday after a long weekend. Uh, but unfortunately, today was just kind of like a little bit slow, to be honest. A lot of breakouts, you know, didn't really hold. Um, I'm ending the day green, but it's a, it's a pretty small green for me. And uh, let's kind of go over some of the trades right now. So first stock, NEO. This was a stock that I traded a couple of times last week um, on Thursday and Friday, I believe, uh, mostly on the long side. And today you can see this thing sold off uh, from the highs from uh, last week, from 55 all the way down to 49 today. If you look at the way it's trading pre-market, pre-market was around you know, $49 um, after the huge sell-off. But if you look at the daily chart, um, I like the fact that on the daily chart, um, the weakness around uh, $48 and uh, over uh, 49.70s, this range, that long wick near the bottom kind of got bought back up. Um, that at least shows that there could be some interest um, in the stock on the long side around those areas. Um, and they also have an event on July 9th, the power up day, um, I believe um, in China. Well, I'm not a long term NEO investor. I know from the last you know, many, many times I've traded a stock before. I know um, a lot of times they usually run up into the event. Um, it's kind of like the Tesla battery day. Um, they usually have a lot of these events and uh, the stock usually runs up leading into it. So um, if the, the event is in, in a couple of days, um, that's why I was looking at the weakness around the 4870s and 40 and $50 range to see if we're going to start getting some uh, volume on the breakout. Um, and we did break out today, but unfortunately we didn't hold the breakout. Um, so that's, anyways, that's the kind of the thought process behind looking at NEO on the side. Uh, I'm usually better at trading NEO on the long side. In the past, before, um, I remember trading this thing on the long side all the way back in um, near November, December of last year. When it ran up from 40s to you know 50s, back to 40s, and then went all the way to all-time highs around the 60s and the almost 70 dollars. I'm happy Neo finally broke the downtrend. Uh, it retraced all the way to 30s, and then now it's coming all the way back. Um, and currently, we're trading around 50 dollars range. Uh, but anyways, that's my thought process behind why I was watching uh, NIO. Um, and uh, the breakout today was uh, pretty strong uh, on the front side. And then later on in the midday, after like 11 o'clock, it just sold off again. So today, uh, if you look at the chart, uh, I avoided the, this morning breakout because a lot of times, um, you know, the morning breakout, a lot of times I've seen the stock break out, especially NEO, break out and just pull all the way back down. So I didn't try to loan this in the morning at $50.40. You can see the opening price was $49.40s. Um, it went all the way to the 50s and then came right back down. So um, I didn't I didn't catch that and I didn't wasn't involved in it. Um, and it wasn't until I see it come back down near the 49.40s uh, where it opened and kind of slowly consolidating, um, held a uh, higher low, 49.20s. And uh, we're, we're still seeing some steady volume. So it's not like volume was drying up. Out. Um, I broke about VWAP. Um, I saw the pullback to the same area, 49, 50s. Um, that's why I took the long. Um, but ideally, I wanted to see it go red to green. So if it's a stock is below previous day's close, then it's red on the day. Um, and psychologically, I want the stock to actually go green on the day. And that's where you get the actual volume surge come in once it goes green on the day. So um, usually, my rule of thumb is unless there's a very good thesis and a very good setup, I try not to long stocks. That's red on a day. Um, that's like the most basic thing um, you can do. And if you're new, you know, if you keep that in mind, just long stocks that's green on a day, you know, don't don't long stocks that's red on a day. That would actually save you a lot of money. Um, anyway, so I sold some into the previous day close. And then I, after seeing that it's actually holding the, the previous day's close area, 50, 40s, and the, the volume was very strong. 
as well if you look at um the five minute volume these things are trading at one to 2.5 uh, million volume traded so you need volume to break out um, especially on um, on these kind of stocks um the larger cap stock has kind of under a lot of pressure you can see it's under the same uh this resistance 51 dollars 60 cents but uh, we have some decent upside so that's why i added into it 50 dollars 60 cents i added on the way up um remember large cap breakouts um, i'm comfortable buying the breakouts on the large caps wouldn't do the same on the small caps so uh, fifty dollars seventy cents i added some more sold some into this and re-added kind of just kind of re re-adding back to the shares i sold on the way up uh took the profit most of the profits at 51 dollars um 51 dollars small resistance here and also on the daily as well you can see on the daily chart 51 dollars small resistance um uh, but really you know the, the the I think the key resistance is around fifty one sixties, which is the highs from this is Friday, yeah, from last Friday. Um, so that's uh, why I longed into it, and I was all out around the fifty one fifties. I was looking for more potentially, but um, didn't get it, and the market was heavy, so I, that's why I didn't go back into Neo. You can see this thing went red on the day after going green. It went red about um, this is like what almost twelve o'clock about 11 30s so you know if, to me that's kind of bearish if it went green on the day and then went red again so you can see it's rejecting that red to green again so that's why i'm leaving this thing alone until maybe later on power hour or again tomorrow i'll be looking for something similar next stock was a loss and uh, i had a very nice entry on osat this is a very very um small float stock and then today is the first day it gapped up um i was buying the dips on this thing like i said i wouldn't buy the breakout um most of the long is down here at 8 19 and i was adding small size into the existing position thinking that it's gonna do the big um squeeze to ten dollars 60 cents like it did a lot later um uh, but it came all the way back down so this one turned out to be a small loss um because i did add on the way up um uh, but decent entry uh originally at 8 17 she has sold it into um 950s breakout but could have would have should have uh, and it was a small position so i was looking to for more upside uh, but this one turned out to be a small loss on osat and i just kind of left it alone um the the these kind of super low float socks a lot of times it's hard to predict and that's why i still prefer to trade the large cap stocks and if you are new or a trader um i would suggest just my own personal opinion it's better to trade the larger cap stocks that's a lot cheaper um, as opposed to trading these micro floats because the variants are very big you can either make a lot of money or lose a lot of money um, especially if you're brand new and don't know how to manage your risk uh, most people will make some money you know when when these low floats actually run but they give it all back um, a lot of the time so anyways that's from my own personal experience some of my biggest losses as a new trader in my first year was from low floats so i didn't really start building my account until i finally just stayed away from these low float small cap stocks and focus on the larger cap stocks like nio like the the spce like the the, the bigger names um that's not crazy volatile like these uh low float stocks like osat next one is another low floater m-r-i-n and this is kind of the the leader of these low float uh small cap stocks for the last couple of days so yeah m-r-i-n um that's leading the these kind of small cap sentiment and then you have the new ones o-s-a-t and then you have b-l-i-n um that one's also down on the day today a lot of these um low floaters they are very extended on the daily um this m-r-i-n came from three dollars and was up for uh, you know a couple of days straight um right now trading at 25s i didn't short the stock um i didn't see an edge in the short um, until it really really actually show us that it's you know it's gonna have a breakdown day on the daily i'm kind of watching this for a short eventually i don't think that's gonna be today maybe tomorrow on the short side uh it's it's showing two red days now but uh, today it's kind of still holding up uh, you can see that it's holding this 21 dollars prior days fridays small support uh, but then you have resistance at 27 dollars for now it's a no trade i only scalped it on the long side um just buying the 
dips and uh, sell into the breakout. Small, small position when I'm scalping these low floaters, um, but uh, small profits, 24.50 sold into the 25s. Um, same thing again here, 23 sold into the 23.90s. When I trade these low floaters, I'm not holding for home runs, especially they are so extended on the daily. You cannot have both the the longs and the shorts trapped. The shorts have been trapped since maybe like six, seven dollars. Um, I never, I never shorted the stock. You know, it's very dangerous. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've been shorting these low floaters, small cap stocks a lot less in 2021, especially when it's still trending out on the daily. I just made that a rule and uh, that's been saving me so much money. So um, so that's why I didn't short MRIN. But I think the day will come. I don't know if that's going to be tomorrow or the next day. But so far, you can see on the daily, each dip is getting bought back up. Um, the shorts are still pretty bent on the stock. So just small scalps on MIN, and I'm trading when I'm trading these uh, long. I'm also using a lot of smaller share sizes as well, just because they are low float and they jump up and down a dollar, two dollars really fast. Now the next one is BSQR. This is an example where I said that when I'm shorting low floaters, I will only um, kind of scalp or I would wait for it hit some daily resistance. So the first day was this day when this thing ran from on the 29th um, to $4 to eight all the way up and it's been selling off. So today when this thing actually rang up again on no news, I'm using the more the resistance areas from this big green day on the June 29th, using the key areas to short into. In the morning, I was looking at sixes, but I missed the entry. Um, if I short it at six, it want to cover into the flushes to 540s, 550s. Decent profit, didn't keep selling off and actually reclaim VWAP and it's actually breaking out to new highs. Um, but the reason I use the sevens is because if you look at around uh, where it traded on the, around the sevens on the June 29th, um, a lot of decent resistance around the sevens area. The reason I use the seven tens, sevens is because if you look at around um, where it came from on June 29th, um, these were some decent resistance areas from uh, $7 all the way to 740s pretty much. Uh, but today, SSR is triggered, so that makes the stock even more difficult to short, and uh, it's probably contributing to a lot of the short squeeze um, on the stock. It's also uh, very easy to borrow, so that's another thing. So when I'm shorting these small caps, especially when it's easy to borrow, and especially when SSR is triggered, um, I'm just looking for the flush moves and just covering to it. Um, I wasn't gonna hold it all the way down to 540s because um, that's just not working in this market. There's money to be made on the long side and short side, but it all depends on the timing and whether you planned out um, your entries, exits, and your risk levels. So BSQR came all the way back to sevens today. Uh, I'll be watching the stock maybe in the afternoon or tomorrow, how it reacts to this $8 resistance on the daily. Um, it'll be very interesting. I think um, they trapped a lot of shorts today with a big run up from $5 to sevens. Uh, but at the same time, you also have a lot of longs that's trapped around $8. So we'll see what happens around that $8 area, but it's definitely on my watch. So a little bit of a slower day today. Um, I'm ending the day with a small green over here, a very small green, um, just kind of taking um, base hits and uh, not gonna outstay my welcome. Again, following the big losses I had near the end of June, um, I really sized down a lot. So I'm still trading with smaller size until the opportunity really comes back up. And uh, so far today, just a little bit disappointing, not a lot of volume, So, but uh, I'll be okay. And I do want to say though, thank you everyone for your support in my last video in the comment section. Like you probably seen, I had some difficult times at the end of June uh, with trading after a long streak of green days. I think I had like a three week green streak and um, the, the end of the week in June, I was just like pretty much all red. I did give back a lot more profit than I wanted. I gave back about 20%, which you know, I'm still up very decently, but it was a little bit disappointing and that's the reason I was a little bit more frustrated. But at the same time, you know, you have to keep everything into perspective, right? Um, for someone who can make $1,000 and they lose $200, it sucks, but they still have the ability to make that $1,000 in the first place. And it's from that risk reward ratio that the same person can kind of build it back up and uh, size back in once the opportunity presents itself. 
So please don't worry, I didn't blow up. Um, I just had some rough patches and uh, I was just sharing my red days and my frustration with you guys, kind of trying to show the reality of day trading. There are gonna be days where it's like smooth sailing, you make big profits, and there are gonna be days where the, the sentiment is just not in your favor and you just have to manage your risk and try to keep your losses small relative to your account size. So thank you guys for all your support. Make sure to stay safe in the market and I will see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video and the bad jokes. If you want to see more day trading content, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more. If you'd like to trade with me daily and get my free weekend watch list and trading journal, make sure to check out the links below for more resources. Stay green, stay positive, and I'll see you guys next time.